Um, welcome to everybody, all the participants from all over the world. Big welcome from the Buddhist Society here in London to, to Venerable Dhammasami uh, from Shan State Buddhist University, who will be talking, this is our fourth in the series on Abhidharma. And um, I should just say how, how very grateful we are, just halfway through the title, but say how, how very grateful we are that Venerable Dhammasami is prepared to give this time to this most important of subjects. And today we are on lesson four, which is mindfulness, wisdom, compassion in the wholesome Chetasikas. So it's a really, really important part of the course. And I hope you've all had a look at your homework and you're ready to go, primed and ready to go. So without any more time, I'm going to pass over to Venerable Damasami. Thank you so much for your talks. <clears throat> Thank you, Chip and um, Desmond. Um, the introduction, especially for, from you, as the, the president of the society and also as a psychiatrist, uh, is very much appreciated. Now, as usual, <clears throat> shall we begin our lesson by reciting Namo Tassa in homage of the Buddha. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa As you already know, um, we continue with the study of Chidesika, 52 Chidesika. <clears throat> Today is um, the last lesson on the Chidesika mental factors. Today we focus on the beautiful one. The text, the, the text called them beautiful Chidesika meaning <clears throat> wholesome Chidesika. Um, as I mentioned at the end of last week, um, <clears throat> that you, you should at least familiarize yourself with the list, which is 24, okay, there's 24 on the, uh, 20, 25 on the list, 25 beautiful mental factors. Or Chitta Seekers. Among the 25, I'm going to focus or emphasize on mindfulness, wisdom, and compassion. I try to relate the Chitta Seeker to you. Um, <clears throat> what you hear every day, the word like mindfulness, the expression, like wisdom, compassion, they are part of Chittisika. And they are wholesome one, beautiful one. Beautiful in Pali is called Sopana, that's direct translation. It's similar to the word that we, we use in Thai, Kuson, in Burmese, Kutu, in Sinhala, Kusala. So being wholesome, being skillful, skillful in a sense, um, it creates peace, harmony, understanding. Okay, these qualities, they help us um, promote a peaceful, harmonious, and understanding society. So, <clears throat> um, you can see how these factors, mindfulness, compassion, wisdom, are relevant to psychology, that is, our state of mind, and also morality, which is our ethical behaviors. Um, 
Um, with this, I'd like to bring you back to the, the diagram that I, I started last week. The diagram behind Professor Paul Gilbert from Derby University in England, a clinical psychologist. Um, his diagram um, has a good relationship to Buddhist psychology and, and Abhidhamma. But by saying this, I'm not, I'm not making a statement that everything what he says and everything what I understand from Abhidhamma are the same. Okay, <clears throat> because we look at um, a big picture, a big picture on our part is about, um, yes, you can look at this one. A big picture on our part is more than understanding emotion. It's about purifying emotion. You know, Professor Paul Gilbert doesn't talk about purification. We talk about purification. Um, <clears throat> he talks about relieving suffering. Of course, we talk about overcoming suffering as well. But we take it in a sociological sense, okay, like we use the word liberation and that sort of thing, um, in a religious sense sometimes. <clears throat> so if you can see these three focuses, or three systems of focus, if I may, I may start um, the repetition, the, the first one, the, the, low, the, um, <clears throat> the bottom one is threat focus. That's when we are in fight and flight mode. Okay, when we are looking for protection, when we don't feel secure, when we feel threatened, as a result, we are looking for safety, safety seeking. Um, what um, Professor Gilbert agrees with Buddhist psychology and Abhidhamma or the whole Buddhist um, uh, philosophy system is that this threat focus, although the intention is very well meaning, okay, is, is very good because we need protection, we need safety. But most of the time, we overdo it and we can shake it off easily. As a result, it, it becomes inhibiting, meaning it hinders, okay, it hinders our thinking. Not just clinical psychologists like him, but neurologists, um, many neurologists who studied this subject also agree that at that moment, when, <clears throat> when um, our brain is working, is working with um, 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 the amygdala that is at the back of our brain, at that moment, our judgment, our decision-making ability it's inhibited, it's hindered. Okay, we make wrong decisions, we make mistakes. Okay, sometimes as a driver, you take the wrong turn, um, you make wrong judgments. As um, a sports person, you, know, you make a wrong judgment when to assess, uh, you know, assess like, uh, your effort, your energy, and when to slow down, when you, when <clears throat> you should keep in uh, preservation mode, when you should be observing, you know, you make mistakes. When <clears throat> your amygdala is so active, and in the Jitisika, we call this dosa, and we study um, a group of four working in the dosa group, in the 
anger group or in the fear group. Fear also includes in its um, um, extreme function, it includes hatred like that. It can begin with something like irritation, agitation, aversion. Like that. So this is threat focus. <clears throat> One thing that I I didn't mention, I'd like to mention today, <clears throat> uh, just just by, pass, by passing, <clears throat> because we have not studied matter, we have not studied material, okay, rupa, we have not studied this. Now, this, what I'm going to say, relates to material, how the mind and the body, okay, um, work together. So in the thread focus, the hormone that we produce is cortisol hormone. We all know this is stress producing. So if we feel stressful, we need to check our mind. How we should check it? Now today we talk about mindfulness. We should use mindfulness to check it. To be, we should we should practice. We should develop an awareness practice, the habit of awareness, just to check our aversion, just to check um, our fear, our agitation, just to check that. If we don't check that, we will be overwhelmed by this threat focus, okay, threat focus system, both in the mind and also in the brain. In the brain, not just in the brain, in our biological, the whole biological system, like the cortisol hormone. Um, <clears throat> so uh, Paul Gilbert talks about, uh, yeah, I mean, he, um, he talks about anger, anxiety, disgust, and I have added quite a few last week and also now. The second one, incentive. Focus on resource focus. This is we do something when we do something because we want something. Okay, we're incented now to do something. Um, so we are going after resources. We want resources. So the when we want them, when we want the resources, and then we pursue them, we make effort. Of course, if we keep making effort, we achieve them. We consume, we may use up the resources that we have. Look, okay, how in the last century and up to now uh, have become, okay, how, how we have become. Um, consumers, how consumerism um, pervades every aspect of our life. So this is, I mentioned uh, last week, this is loba, and we have three in that. Not just, okay, wantings, uh, um, Material, material things. But wanting maybe to propagate an idea, to dominate other people with an idea, with a um, um, belief, with unbelief. Say if two people, they both um, prefer different songs, and different types of music. And look, if they try to convince each other, look at their behavior. That's kind of incentive focus. Okay, people feel very driven. And they feel that they live for that vitality. They feel they live for that. Okay, they are very active. They are always you know, excited talking about 
what they want. And here, as you may notice last week, Loba operates with Diti. Diti means wrong view. When you want to convince somebody about your idea, and you hold on that idea from self-centered point of view, that's where we see incentive or re re <coughs> resource focus. People who, who, um, who want money, who want fame, who want recognition, who want um, a large, a large following, um, or maybe you know, who want okay, the most, some of the most expensive cars, for example. You can look at that behavior from this. Today, our focus is not wanting an affiliative focus, this one. This is the when the hippocampus area of the brain is working. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in terms of um, Physiology, in terms of biology, people say this is where um, oxytocin hormone is produced. Affiliated focus means you feel connected. You feel connected with um, <clears throat> you feel connected with the people. You feel connected with their pain, with their problem. Okay. In the middle of a pandemic like this, if we don't feel connected with the pain, with the pain of the people, instead, if we focus more on our ideas, how things should be done, very often, you come back to threat focus. That is why in, in the clinical psychology point of view, um, Professor Gilbert, you know, he has the arrow going both ways. From affiliative focus, you can return to threat focus. From threat focus, you can return to affiliative focus. It's about getting balance in their system. But as far as the Buddhist view, Buddhist psychology of philosophy, okay, psychology of philosophy is concerned, we believe that <clears throat> uh, if we put enough effort, we can do away with threat focus, we can do away with incentive focus, or we can reduce them to the minimal. And we can ensure that non-wanting and affiliative focus dominates. Non-wanting or affiliative focus, how do we, how do we be, become affiliated to other um, <coughs> human beings? Um, forget about strangers sometimes. Our family, with our family members, our friends, our colleagues, we, d we are not on the same wavelength. We are not on the same page. When we are not on the same page, we actually feel threatened by each other. You feel threatened that your idea may be rejected, that their idea, okay, might be imposed on you, something like that. If that happens, even if you are related through blood, you're not going to be um, 
not going to be able to connect with each other. Um, <clears throat> that is why um, we talk about wisdom and compassion. Wisdom in which sense? Wisdom in a sense of understanding uh, problem as a universal as universal, as transcending um, <clears throat> transcending family, transcending community, transcending nationality, transcending national borders, transcending colors, social status. To understand a problem in that way, in that way is called wisdom. Okay. It's called wisdom. This is to understand problems as being universal, the universality of the problem. In other words, <clears throat> when we talk about uh, a problem of a community, a problem of a country, um, it may be health, it may be education, it may be psychology, um, it may be mindset, it may be culture, it may be economy, whatever we see, whatever we talk about, if we personalize it and we think this problem is unique to us, is unique to us, and We, we are not closer to wisdom, okay? because we don't recognize the common um, humanity. Common humanity means, okay, now this pandemic affects every nation. Some people, they don't even recognize that this problem is there. They think it's a hoax. Whatever their belief, whatever their view, if we see that those people, they are as affected, affected, okay, affected by this problem as we are, then we, we have a higher level of tolerance towards those people. Emotionally, we are not that easily shaken meaning we have more resilience. So this is wisdom. This is wisdom. Um, <clears throat> people can't go to work, some people, <clears throat> they even lost their job, <clears throat> their job. In many countries, students in a country tend to school. Um, life becomes uh, li life. Okay, has to get used to new normal. Okay, <clears throat> new uh, new type of normality. If we forget that this problem affects people we know and people we don't know, everyone. We actually, um, <clears throat> we can, we can, we can end up in the, we can end up, okay, in the threat focus system and behave in a way that is um, unwholesome, that is unwholesome. So when we have wisdom, Meaning, when we see a problem as common humanity, at that moment, it's a lot easier to relate to people emotionally. Wisdom is not about emotion, it's about rational, being rational, it's about intellectual understanding. Okay, it's about um, having the right attitude. But when we talk about compassion, this is about emotion. Is emotion intelligent in, in a sense? Is part of wisdom. 
<clears throat> in uh, Theravada Buddhism, we consider compassion as part of wisdom in, uh, in the Noble Eightfold Path. When we talk about compassion, then, we need to be able to relate to our own pain, other people's pain. We need to be able to connect our pain with their pain, their pain with our pain. Sometimes the color, nationality, <clears throat> social status, uh, different belief system, they come in between and we can't connect. We can't connect. You can try this, okay. Um, if you look at a news websites, like the BBC, the CNN, NBA, whatever. If you look at, <clears throat> if you look at that website, if you read the news, say you read about the COVID-19, the coronavirus, you read about different regions of the world, Europe, okay, United Kingdom, and and uh, <clears throat> now, okay, that Brexit has happened, and we are not part of the EU anymore, officially. <clears throat> Although in some way we are still related. Um, if you look at the surges in the um, coronavirus cases in the continent and in the UK, if you feel the same pain, now your compassion is working. But if you're more interested in the UK, you feel your you feel the pain um, of those affected, but when you look at the news from Europe, if you don't feel you know the pain as much, this will affect this will damage your compassion level because. The affiliated focus is not working properly. Okay, the, your connection with the pain in Europe is not strong. This can be can be applied. Okay, between India and Pakistan, between India and China, <clears throat> uh, and in the United States between um, different states. Some may be governed by uh, um, Democrat governors, some Republican governors. If you don't feel the pain in equal terms, but you feel the pain of those people who share your ideology only, your affiliated system is not working. You will go into the threat focus. You feel threatened by the people who don't share your ability, your, <clears throat> your ideology, your way of thinking, your way of working. Your professional, you're going to feel threatened by those people. When you feel threatened by those people, that will hinder your judgment. Okay, that will hinder your judgment. <clears throat> that is why when we affiliate, when we feel affiliated, that's compassion. When we feel affiliated, um, with those people, pain, those people's problem, those people's oh, sadness, <clears throat> their losses. When we feel affiliated with them. Actually, we feel safe. We don't feel threatened. That's the nature of kindness. That's the nature of compassion. 
the nature of compassion. And in that moment, because you don't feel threatened, you don't excessively okay, try to acquire resources just to protect yourself, just to ensure that you feel safe. You don't do that anyway. That's what we call non-wanting. Non-wanting in the Jedisika, <clears throat> uh, 25 beautiful Jedisika, is called Atloba. Atloba is non-greed. That means generosity. So you are generous towards people. When you feel affiliated to their pain. You see, the Buddha always talks about problem. The word problem is called dukkha. He formulates the Four Noble Truth, the center of philosophy, his center of philosophy, around dukkha, around problem, understanding problem. So in understanding problem, I have just described at two levels. Intellectual level and emotional level. Intellectual level, we call this wisdom. Emotional level, we call this compassion. They are beautiful. But in order to, uh, to develop compassion and wisdom, what we need is, we need to be aware of the present moment. What happens in our body, in our mind, what happens in the world. What happened with our neighbors? What happened with um, the employees, the, the, the underprivileged? What happened to them? You know, it's about being aware of them. This is mindfulness. And so, in that Okay, you, feel, you can see uh, the diagram, content, safe and connected. That's the emotion that you get. You feel contented. You also feel safe. You also feel safe. <clears throat> Why? Because you feel connected. As a mother, okay, maybe human being, maybe, <clears throat> maybe animal, animal mother, they themselves may be hungry, but if their baby is hungry at the same time, they would feed their baby first. Because they can connect with the pain of hunger in their baby. The baby may not be able to connect with the mother's hunger, but the mother can connect with her baby's hunger. Because of that, the mother feel very safe at that time and also contented. One word in the diagram, in the circle, is called soothing. That means, okay, it removes your stress. It removes your confusion. With this, we are going to look at and the next slide, which is which is the, the factor. Now, you have got an overview of the three circles, and I have described in brief mindfulness, wisdom, and compassion. Where do you find mindfulness? Is the second one, number twenty-nine, and. <clears throat> Where is wisdom? Wisdom, the last one, is called non-delusion. That's wisdom. Where is compassion? At number 50. So, I extract those three to give you an overview of beautiful Jedasika. We all need this. Not just Buddhist monks. Okay. Not just Buddhist monks. Um, doctors, engineers, nurses, patients, uh, politicians, business people, employers, employees, managers, and, and their clients. Everybody needs those three. In the workplace, when, when there's a problem, 
if you can connect with the pain of everyone related to that problem, and uh, you will start feeling threatened, and you don't want, you are not as forthcoming as you should be anymore. You are not very creative in solving problem. Instead, you become self-centered. Self-centered. So uh, that kind of behavior is not helpful. Okay, in the workplace. <clears throat> if we look at the list of uh, 25, I have explained about mainly three of them. We are going to start with the first one, faith. <clears throat> okay. Um, th this is um, a sense of okay, self assurance. You feel self assured. Of course, what we talk about, we talk about having confidence in the Buddha, in the Dhamma, and in the Sangha. In the Dhamma, in the sense that, okay, we as a human being, we can um, develop our mind to understand, um, program to develop wisdom and compassion. And this is about belief in Dhamma. Okay, we are not talking about books. Okay, books are just a container. Books. Buddhist texts, they are just containers. Okay, when we talk about the Dharma, the teacher of the Buddha, we talk about the Buddha's philosophy, the philosophy that, say, <coughs> that says that mm, a human being can develop self-reliance and solve problem. And if many individuals do that, that society okay, will be um, very liberating, okay, very peaceful, harmonious. So that's what we say, believe in the Dharma. We go to the extent that we can purify our mind, we can um, we can eradicate the threat focus and the incentive focus. And then consolidate uh, the affiliated focus. So, to have a belief in this, it's called faith, okay? It's a sense of self-reassurance, as I mentioned earlier. Mindfulness I've already explained, and then shame and fear of the wrongdoing. These two I have already explained in the unwholesome one. Lack of shame and lack of fear, of course, the opposite of these two I explained last week. And this way, you know, we have the opposite. Shame means, you know, when you, when you, um, when you refrain from doing anything unwholesome, anything negative, because of self-respect, you respect yourself. Fear of wrong, wrongdoing, <clears throat> Um, this means when you refrain from doing something bad, something immoral, something corrupt, because you respect the society, because you respect others. The commentary gives um, an example. <clears throat> maybe, <clears throat> maybe, maybe a piece of iron, a bar of iron, an iron bar. One is cold, one is hot. One is red hot, okay. One is very cold, but the cold one is dirty. It's dirty with cow dung, okay, with um, 
um, something else. You don't touch it, although it's not as dangerous as the hot one. You don't touch it because you respect yourself, because you, care, you feel disgusted, because it's disgusting. So you don't do that. So out of self-respect, if you avoid any untoward behavior, un uh, seeming behavior, unto un unbefitting behavior. Uh, this is called um, to have shame. Is 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 a beautiful chitisika. These two, okay, I mentioned last week: shame and fear of wrong. These two together. Uh, in popular term, we can call them conscience. We have our conscience. But here in the Jesus and Abhidhamma Jesus, we divide them into two. One, you have conscience because one is you believe this is wrong and you respect yourself, you don't do that. The other one is <clears throat> you believe it's wrong and it's going to affect other people. You fear, you fear the consequences for other people. So these two together, the Buddha said, they are the guardian of the world, the guardian of the moral world, the guardian. Um, without these two, we don't have guardians. No, we need to, to promote okay, <clears throat> conscience um, in the children, among ourselves, in the literature, um, in the culture, you know, we should promote them. And you have non-greed and non-hatred. Uh, they are quite, um, sim quite easy to understand. Non-greed, in a sense of generosity, being generous. In a sense of, you know, being able to let go. Feeling safe to share. Some people, they, don't, they feel threatened and they don't share. Okay. They feel threatened. Or they, feel, <clears throat> they, fear, they fear that they may not have enough. So they don't want to share. So in the minds of generous people, there is secure feeling. Secure feeling. There is contentment. They are not uh, resource seeking or running out of resources. Instead, they share what, what they have. Non hatred. Non hatred or non anger. This is about non threat system. If we look at from the three circle diagram, this is about. No, this is a non-threat focus. The word that we we are all familiar with is metta or maitri. Metta or maitri, loving kindness. But the word loving kindness is used here as non-hatred. Uh, Sometimes I translate it as non-anger. Why, why, why metta or loving kindness is mentioned as non anger, non hatred? Well, um, this is to show us that anger management is very important. If we are agitated, if we feel resentful, okay, if we get angry often, forget about metta, forget about loving kindness. Um, among the many aspects of metta, among the many aspects of, of loving-kindness, non-anger or management, 
managing our anger is very very important i would say it's a foundation the foundation according to the analysis of vidam sometime we justify our anger is something like you justify in the stupidity of somebody and you burn yourself you burn yourself with fire is not a wise solution that is why the buddha said if you want to solve problem first manage your anger <clears throat> we know when we get angry or when we resent as somebody somebody's behavior somebody's attitude towards us we we, we can see how we are no longer affiliated or connected to that person is quite easy to see this and the next one is neutrality of mind this is sometimes called equanimity or upekha <clears throat> i should say he um, that upekha is not about ignoring it's not about ignoring somebody's pain unfortunately unfortunately the word upekha is understood in Port, um, um, Burmese, Thai, Sri Lankan culture as ignoring or giving up. No, it doesn't mean that. It means a balanced state of mind. Okay, you, you still feel connected, but emotionally, intellectually, you are balanced at that time. You are not shaken. This is to say the mind is free from biases. The mind is is free from being inhibited, being being hindered by hindrances. Um this requires a very high state of concentration to reach neutrality of the mind. <clears throat> after that <clears throat> after that you're going to have uh, 12 chidasika uh group them into six pairs okay uh, you can read the tranquility of mental body tranquility of consciousness first is tranquility then lightness then um, um, uh, malleability uh, wilderness proficiency rectitude six qualities <clears throat> tranquility is about being composed okay here mental body means um feeling with uh, perception sanya and the other jitika the rest of the jitika so being calm being calm sometimes we have compassion but our compassion is not very calm is very restless not very composed yes it's true some mother could they are very dedicated they're very loving there's no doubt about that but this factor is is missing tranquility okay that love is not very calm not very composed so composure another one lightness okay um <clears throat> um this one is about you know the opposite of feeling sluggish is about being buoyant lightness mudita the third one is uh, mudita uh, 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 earlier is lahuta now this is mudita this one is is about being plastic plastic means being flexible not rigid 
Sometimes we have a bit of wisdom, but our wisdom is hindered by not having this one, this Chittisika, not having flexibility. But we are very rigid. We may be able to see the problem in the right way to a certain extent, but then we are rigid, we, we are not open to other people's opinion. So we become so self-centered with our own ideas, our own way of doing things. <clears throat> my, one of my experiences okay, with um, with with the other monks, sometimes senior to me, sometimes junior to me. Um, one day, one senior monk, okay, before okay, when we were having our lunch, he wanted to have fruit first. In in both the east and the west, uh, people usually have fruit later, but this. Teacher, this Marian teacher, he is in his 80s, he wanted to have fruit first <clears throat> before he has his main course. And mm -mm. Uh, one other monk, okay, he, who is not his pupil, he said, No, 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 have this one first, <laughs> main course first, not fruit first. different um, uh, approaches to eating. People have their own preferences. <clears throat> if you think your way of eating is, uh, is the right one, and, and you're, going to be, you're going to be judging other people you know, who, don't share, who don't share your approach. Who don't share your approach. So people, people fight all the time in politics, in academics, um, at work, in the boardroom, even between husband and wife, because people have different ideas. And uh, when they don't have this, <clears throat> this factor, uh, which is, um, um, being plastic, there's a called plasticity. We talk about neuroplasticity these days. That our brain is not rigid; it can be, it can, it, it, it it's changeable. It it can be changed. <clears throat> People have discovered this uh, some twenty years ago. So um, in the beautiful qualities of the mind. This is rather important. The fourth group or the fourth pair, um, the fourth pair is wildness. Wildness. This means okay. It's about workableness. It's about serviceable. Serviceable means. It's it's about it's about it's about being ready to work. Okay, it's about being ready to work. Um, is functionable. Is workable. The fifth one, the fifth one is uh, is clear. is called proficiency, proficiency of the mind as a quality of the mind. And the last one is straightforwardness. Rectitude means being straightforward. The absence of twist and turn in the mind is quite straightforward. <clears throat> the mind is not easily deflected. Yeah. 
And we can call this uh, being straightforward, being honest, being open, you know, all those. <clears throat> These six pairs of Jitisika qualities, and with the, the other, okay, all together, 19 of them, we call them beautiful universal, meaning in everything beautiful, in everything wholesome, they are there. They are there. Let's look at the next six. Okay, the first one is three abstinences. The three abstinences. They um, the first, the first, <clears throat> the first two. Okay, uh, right speech and right action. They are precepts. If you talk about five precepts, they are the first two. Right speech, that's not telling a lie, but to tell the truth, to say something beneficial. Okay, that's right speech. Right action is a, um, not harming people, not taking anything, not given. They don't give us. And <clears throat> Um, not to behave wrongly in um, a sexual behavior, sexual intercourse. And the last one is intoxication. So they are right action. You can see that Buddhism looks at the precepts not as commandment of the divine, not divine commandment that you must do, but it looks at the five training, okay, the training of the five precepts as the quality of the mind. Right speech, right action. Behind those right speech and right action, you see. Uh, jiddy seekers qualities and then you have two unlimitable unlimitable qualities compassion and appreciative joy actually there are four of them four brahma vihara four divine qualities where are the other two the other two one of them is non-hatred the other is neutrality of the mind so if you compare this, uh, if you combine with those two, all together they make for for Brahma Vihara, the divine qualities, Metta, Karuna, Mudita, Ubeka. These are the Pali word uh, we are quite familiar with. <clears throat> Unlimited, but why there's no limit? This one is about emotional quality that we can extend this positive emotion to everyone even to the people who disagree with us who belong to the other side who have nothing to share with us who may even be um, talking you know in a harmful way to us The Buddha said, it's possible the mind has this capacity to expand, to include them, to include them, or to relate to them, to feel affiliated to them. If you do so, as you, can, as you have seen in the three circles, you feel safe, you don't feel threatened by them. Otherwise, if you feel threatened by the people who speak negatively about you, then first you need to look at your mind. Where is your mind? Is your mind is in the is your mind in the focus system? Then you need to bring in mindfulness to work on that insecure mind. Compassion. I mentioned earlier, I explained quite a bit earlier how wisdom and compassion are related. 
Wisdom is about understanding the pain being universal affecting them and us. And compassion is about relating to that pain emotionally. Appreciative joy, this one, um, scientists, <clears throat> no, they have not studied very much. It's called mudita. They talk about oh, gratitude, exercise of gratitude. In positive psychology these days, they talk about this. Uh, gratitude, appreciation. But the Buddha would say, appreciative joy. Okay, first you appreciate your own effort, your hard work, your achievement. Then you expand this to include as many as possible. Along the way, you break down the barriers. So if you can appreciate one thing in the people you think are your opponent, in the people who don't, who don't share, who don't share with your belief, who don't share with your culture, if you have an appreciation of some aspect of their life, or if what they do makes sense, at least makes sense to you, then you're not as threatened. You don't feel as threatened by them anymore. We can talk about coexistence. I would say that this appreciative joy also produces oxytocin uh, hormone. As a result, you feel safe. And this is also um, affiliative focus. It belongs to affiliative focus, not just compassion, but also this one. I think I have explained quite a bit. Let's go to the last slide. Lavinia. Okay. <clears throat> This is an application, okay, application of the Chitta Sika. <clears throat> this diagram uh, is from Tadantara Prash, an American Buddhist and psychologist. Uh, she has her own, um, her own website, okay, Tara Prash. Prash is B R. A A C H. She talks about how people respond, okay, to the COVID, to the COVID virus. You can see the three zone: fear zone, learning zone, and growth zone. Three zones. In the fear zone, what do we do? This is our behavior, okay, how people do. So people search and share everything they can find about COVID. They, uh, they send it to their friend, look, look, look. Look at this. Okay, they want to share everything. Whenever they see it, it's me meaning you know, they are in, in a sense in fear, they get very irritated easily. And they do a lot of panic buying. Maybe twice less row, maybe maybe food, maybe many things, okay. So people in in the fear zone, in the fear mode. Um, in Paul Gilbert's three circle, this is about threat focus. In the JDC guard, this is about dosa. We talk about the four dosa, okay. Forget about the COVID-19, say tomorrow, I wish, okay. Tomorrow, if the COVID-19 is over, many people will still live in fear zone. If not for the, <coughs> for the old virus, if not for the new viruses, 
they might feel threatened by other people at work, by their neighbor having a nice car, by somebody dressing up very smart. They might feel threatened by them. By somebody getting promotion, getting elected, okay? They might just feel threatened by those people. So this is fear zone. When in that situation, what do you do? You know, you, you victimize yourself. It's, it's a besieged system, besieged mentality. So you, you, you look to blame, you seek to blame other people. So a lot of complaining, a lot of negative, negative speaking, a lot of um, negative posts okay, on, <laughs> on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, a lot of negative comments like that. What we need then, we need mindfulness. We need, we need to bring mindfulness to look at our emotional reaction. Where we are, which zone? It is a fear zone. Is it in the threat focus? Is it in the four dosa group of Jeta Sika? Dosa is a Macharya Kokucha. Is, is, is it in that group? So if we bring mindfulness, now mindfulness belongs to a, you know, the beautiful group of Jeta Sika. If we bring mindfulness, mindfulness we put gradual, some gradual break to the fear. So fear would not be spinning and spinning. Instead, you know, you would uh, put a break on, on the fear and the fear will start lessening, decreasing. So in that reflective mode, okay, now you start um, having some calm moment. You will still have some fear, so sometimes you go into the fear zone, but now uh, you also come out of that and you are in the learning zone. In the learning zone, what you do then is uh, you start having... <clears throat> Mindfulness, you start having awareness. Um, you are able to check your own behavior, not just emotionally, but what you buy, what you say. Okay. Something that can harm your own psychology, psychological status something that can harm other people, like negative talks, negative comments. Yeah. One diplomat um, recounted to, to me okay, at that time he was in Japan, when <clears throat> a nuclear, um, um, nuclear electricity plant okay, was uh, mm, was hit by a tsunami and mm, the water in that town um, be became polluted and, and people had to e import water from other parts of Japan. So people had to queue, had to queue in the supermarket <clears throat> for water and no one put up notices, okay, how to behave and how much you should buy and you shouldn't buy more than this, more than that, more than which, you know, amount of um, bottled water, you know, there were no notices. People queue and when they got into the supermarket, they bought only one bottle, meaning they felt so connected with everyone in the town and everyone in the queue. Okay. With only one bottle of water, they feel safe. <laughs> Is it enough? Not enough. But why you feel safe? Because you feel connected with the pain of everyone. 
So there's no pan there was no panic, no panic buying. In that, if you're in that situation, you already moved to the growth zone. Okay, you already moved to the growth zone. If you feel connected with everyone and you appreciate everyone's suffering, you appreciate everyone's passion, you appreciate the supermarket. Uh, made water available, you appreciate also that the people in the queue you know, have the same need. You appreciate that. And that is reflected in your behavior. In your behavior. So you are thinking about how you can be of help, how you can contribute. So your mind is very positive in that sense. That's growth zone. This growth zone, we talk about wisdom, we talk about compassion, we talk about being calm, we, think, we talk about being composed, okay, psychologically. We talk about work, we talk about mind being provisions, so we talk about those beautiful jitter seekers. I think I have spoken enough today. Any question? Thank you. Thank you very much, Banti. That was the most lovely talk. Gives us plenty to think about and reflect on. And a lot of digesting and a lot of opportunity for practice too. Um, there are quite a few questions. Um, and probably one of them is you, is a very simple one from Sarah Matheson. Can you can you explain mental body? Um, mental body is a technical term uh, meaning three jetisic at uh, three and three aggregates. You know we have we have five aggregates. One of them is material, so we take that out. So we on, we are left only with three and with four and uh, and one of them is consciousness which we are going to be talking next week so uh, we we minus two we are left with three three jitisika. one of them is is feeling vedana the other is perception sanya both of them they are in the universe list of Jitisika, in the list of universal Jitisika, so seven, okay. The last one is the other 50 Jitisika, 50. So when we say, when we talk about mental body, we mean <laughs> 52 Jitisika. <laughs> it's just technical term, it's a jargon, if you like, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, it says here, this is from just a question from last week's lecture. And what is the difference between moha and worry? Between moha and moha. worry. And worry. worry. Mm. Uh, worry. Worry is called dosa. Okay. Worry is, is, is anxiety is the same. But we worry, okay, because we don't see the situation properly. We don't see the problem. We don't see, we don't accept it. Because of that, okay, we are consumed by anxiety. We are consumed by worry. So you can see in the worry, there is moha, there is, there is delusion, there is, there is ignorance. <clears throat> if you don't mind me quoting uh, Mrs. Roosevelt, the wife of uh, President Roosevelt, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, one quote is, um, is, dedica is uh, uh, attributed to her. She's, uh, no, no, sorry, sorry, not her. It's, it's uh, Einstein, the scientist. <clears throat> 
sorry. And he said, if we accept our limits, we often go beyond them. Not accepting the problem, not accepting our limit at that time causes more worry, causes more anxiety. If we think about all the possibilities and, and we, we accept them mentally, this is the task of mindfulness. With mindfulness, what he says, he may not be using this <laughs> Jitasika, but I'm interpreting Einstein from Jitasika. If we, if we are mindful of the problem, we often find the solution. So, not just intellectually, but also emotionally. Okay, thank you. So if we're not in denial of what, how things are, then we can... Exactly, exactly. Now this is a very good question. Um, what is the difference between mental body and consciousness? Something that people get confused with. Um, <clears throat> Um, you have to combine today's lesson and next week's lesson to answer this. Can I answer this next week? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much time have we got? A few minutes? Okay, okay, a few minutes, maybe five minutes, yeah. Somebody wants to know the web address of the website for the COVID slide, the last slide you showed. Uh, mm, uh, can you find, uh, can you, can you Google, um, uh, you know, Tara, okay, T-A-R-A, Tara Brush, B-R-A-C-H, okay, you will find her. Uh, she has a lot of talks and she also has website. Um, you're going to find um, this diagram in one of them. I think... Um, um, Odin or Desmond, can you also share this with the people? The people. Yes, we can. We can um, share. Thank that. you. We'll thank you. Thank you. Um, and here's one: How do we begin to address the insecure mind so that we do not feel threatened when facing aggressive speech? You have talked about it, but I still don't understand it fully. Um. Two parts of awareness or two parts of mindfulness. We can begin with it. First, we begin with ourselves. That's called self-awareness. We begin with our fear. Maybe dislike. Maybe when somebody talks um, in an aggressive way to you, um, you think the person doesn't give you any respect, as a result, you know, you feel insecure of, of your status, your place in the society, in the society, that you might be violated by the person. Mm -hmm. So, awareness of this fear, awareness of this insecurity, just accept, okay, this is insecure feeling. Take one deep breath, okay, this person is talking like this now. I'm feeling tense. I'm feeling insecure. That's not enough in the long run. You also need to look at insecure feeling in the person. If that person doesn't feel insecure, okay, he or she wouldn't talk to you in that way. People would talk aggressively because um, they, they like to go on an offensive, you know, be aggressive, so that um, um, you don't impose anything on them, so that you become subdued. If you become subdued, if you become controlled, then they feel secure. The way this secure mind security is in itself the expression of insecure feeling in them. So if you can connect with that insecure feeling, insecure feeling, that would be the best because you see insecure feeling as being universal in them 
and in you. I hope this makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. The problem is, is of course, practicing it, isn't it? Yes. No, just take, just, just take one or two deep breaths and, oh, yes. insecure feeling. Because we don't want to feel insecure, so we try not yeah. to let ourselves be aware of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a very complicated question here, but I think it has to be the last one. Okay. Um, and it may, it may be too long for you to answer. Um, and question one, there is, there is only five processes. One, death, rebirth. Two, five door process. Three, mind door process. Four, jhana process. And five, path process. When someone is thinking about dhamma, he is in mind door process with concepts. We call this as thinking or cognitive process. One can think and be in wholesome kushala state of mind then mind operates within the 33 or 34 chetasikas. Then, then he falls asleep with wholesome dreams, which chetasika don't operate in this case. It's a question that is. Mindfulness sati is wholesome. So why cognition is dream sleep is it changed in terms of chetasika? How operates the mind in chetasika when a person is in anesthesia? So I suppose, yes, well. <laughs> I, I, don't think, I don't think I need to give the answer, you know. Um, the question seems to have the answer. And this is a, um, a thought process is a witty chitta, chitta witty. <clears throat> and um, um, we have not discussed this okay, in the fourth lesson. Um, I, I don't want to... Mm -mm. Uh, to be ahead of myself, okay. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you you have the answer. Thank you. Well, I think we can probably leave it at that, as we've now thank got to, to the very end of our time. Well, can I once again thank you very much, and look forward to next week. Thank you. Next, next week will be a lot easier. <laughs> thank you.